Throughout the duration of my Android journey, my Android experience, the Samsung A lineup has been pretty common in my pocket from the A01 to the A10e, the A21, A12, A42, A52. I've seen a lot of A's and throughout this whole time I've always thought a is for affordable. They're usually pretty low-end, pretty cheap phones, nothing super flashy. A is for affordable, right? Despite working with Samsung reps and them saying, no, no, it's, it's A is for awesome. A stands for awesome. Sure it does, buddy. And that was my thought process up until I got my hands on one particular phone. And that would be this, the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G. And I gotta say, after using this phone for a little while, I'm starting to think A is for awesome. Let's talk about it. So as always, to start, we'll do a quick rundown of the specs, the build, everything, all that kind of fancy stuff. The construction is plastic. Back and sides are plastic, it's kind of staple of the A series, you know, not, not spending a ton of money on super high quality parts and, and materials. It is, however, very good quality plastic. It feels nice. It doesn't like creak or crack or anything. It, it feels pretty good. The screen is made of glass. Thank you. That would, that would kind of suck if it was plastic all the way around. But again, that's kind of like a staple of the A series. And speaking of the display, we get a six and a half inch 1080p 120 hertz AMOLED with, as it goes to sleep as I go to do it, an in-screen fingerprint reader. That's pretty cool. Now, everything up until this point has been the same as the A52 or the A52 5G. And we're going to start to deviate from that and then we'll come back to it a little bit later. And I do want to come back to touch on the A52 because it's so similar. But there was one thing that kept me from talking about it on this channel that this phone fixes and it does it really, really well. So the rest of the specs, we see an Exynos 1280 instead of a Snapdragon 750G, which for those of you that pay attention to Samsung and how they do their software means that you should be able to unlock the bootloader on this one and flash your own ROMs. That's something that I can't even do with my Note, tw sorry, S22 Ultra review coming on this in a couple, couple days, maybe a week. But yeah, with just the fact that you can unlock the bootloader with this, which you can't really do with most A phones that I've used, opens up a huge, huge plethora of possibilities for custom ROMs, custom apps, all kinds of fun stuff. You get six gigs of RAM compared to last year's six gigs of RAM or eight if you got the higher tier storage of 256, which you don't see on the A53. You only see 128, not 128 and 256, but I'm gonna be honest, I've been living pretty comfortably within 128 gigs for about a year now since I switched to my 12 Pro. Now again, I do, I, I am flexing two phones, not as much goes on my Android as my iPhone, but 128 for most people should be pretty comfortable at this point in time. It is IP67 water resistant, same as last year, so it can survive a quick drop in the pool or drop in the toilet, uh, but I, I would not recommend swimming with it. It's, uh, it, it's not gonna go well. 25 watt fast charging, although unfortunately this year, you don't get a brick in the box. I can't really be mad because I'm looking at a box over there and I have like five dozen power bricks in there. And that 25 watts charges a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. And I know if I'm saying that like it's a huge deal, 5,000 has kind of been the standard for like two, three years now. But this is this is squarely a budget oriented phone. This That's that's a pretty big number. That's an 11% increase from last year, an extra 500 milliamp hours over 4,500. Very, very welcome change. This thing's lasted me like three days of light to moderate use. And the one thing that I think is going to potentially irk a bunch of people, this is no headphone jack. Now I personally don't care. I broke up with the headphone jack five years ago, over five years ago at this point. I'm not bent out of shape over it. I know some people still live, breathe, and die by the headphone jack. And for those of you out there, this might not be the phone for you. But last year's phone, the A52 5G, still has one. So maybe go get that one. Now the cameras on this thing are unchanged from last year. We see a 64. 64, 64 megapixel main camera. 64, like, I, know, I know we have 100, 108 megapixels, but again, this is a budget phone. I'm gonna, we're gonna talk about the price in a second. The 64 megapixels on a budget phone is pretty nice. And I believe, don't quote me on this, but I believe the A73 has the 108 megapixel shooter. So if you're, if you're into cameras, you might wanna take the jump up to that. I don't know, don't quote me. I've seen one thing on it and that's 
all that I've seen on the A73. I haven't really been paying attention to it. You get a 12 megapixel ultra wide, and then you get a pair of largely useless five megapixel depth and macro cameras. No telephoto, you get no zoom outside of digital zoom. And then your front shooter up in the little hole punch is 32 megapixels, which is pretty damn good. Now, as far as software, usability, ease of use, comfort, I give this thing pretty much straight A's. It's been smooth, flawless. I've had no hiccups, I've had no issues. It's quick, it's clean, it's smooth, it's comfortable. If you've ever used a Samsung phone, you'll be right at home familiar with this. It, it really is testament to what Marquez always says. Good phones are getting cheap and cheap phones are getting good. Because again, this is, this is a budget phone that is packing a whole load of specs that we saw debut in flagship seven, eight, nine, 13, 1400 dollars phones just a couple years ago. And now they've trickled down to the budget market. So now I mentioned I'd come back to the A52 5G. And there was this one thing that really kept it out of my pocket for a majority of last year. I did have it, I did get to play with it. It didn't sell me on it, and therefore I didn't talk about it on the channel, but that, that one thing was the price. The A52 5G started at 500 dollars dollars. That's kind of a lot. So much so that, again, it, it kept it off this channel, right? Like, I, I didn't want to be like, oh, this is a great budget phone, but your budget has to be a minimum of $500. That just didn't feel right. The A53 5G cuts $150 off of that price. This is now $349 to start, and that is a redonkulous price for these specs. You get it through, like, your carrier, you finance it, you throw it on a contract, it's going to be so cheaper like this this thing's going toe to toe with flagship phones from like a year and a half two years ago right it it feels it might not have the exact hardware but it feels as smooth and as clean as flagships from from a couple years ago and this thing costs a third of the price that those phones debuted at i feel like that's the most ludicrous thing right because you know this this is the the typical generational update you know you get faster processor here some RAM here, some software improvements here. And then you look at it and you say, hmm, it's missing something. Add 30 bucks to the price, Apple. But the A53 5G does all of that and says, you know, it's missing something. I don't like that number, cut $150 off of it. So overall, my experience with this phone has been flawless. I'm, I'm still juggling my, my S22 Ultra. See, I did it, I did it right that time. S22 Ultra with this, I've been juggling them for about a week and a half now to comfortably use them both so I can do reviews on them. But there hasn't been like a noticeable gap, right? Like I can comfortably go between these two phones and not really notice that much of a difference. And I think that says a lot for where budget phones have come to, where they're, they're almost indistinguishable from flagships. And that's good. That's good. You don't have to pay top dollar. You don't have to pay thousand, eleven hundred, fourteen hundred dollars to get an incredible camera or a gorgeous display or stupid battery life. This guy, the A53 5G, does all of that and more for three hundred fifty dollars. And I think at that price, it's a steal. If you do it through your carrier, through through financing, you get that price lower. Stop watching this video. Go buy it right now. A53 5G is a one hundred percent. Yes, recommended, wholeheartedly recommended from me. I'm very, very glad to see Samsung knock the lock off of that $500 price tag. That's what kept me from recommending it over the A32 5G, which did 90% of what that phone did, but for like 200 bucks less. Absolutely 100% recommend this phone. If you're looking at it, definitely pull the trigger. You will not be disappointed. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe. Let me know in the comments if you have a phone that you're currently looking at that's under $400. Let me know and maybe I'll pick one up to uh, put on the channel. But until then, I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.